In this video, we will see how to add screens, change screens, and add transitions. We will see different ways to add transition, first through interaction, but also directly from code. Hello and welcome to this How to Touch GFX video. Today, we'll play around with screens and transitions. Here is the final result we will achieve. Four different screens with a button each that leads us to the next screens using a different transition each time. First, we'll see how to use transition using interaction. Then we'll use them inside the code. And finally, we'll see the performances. I have already added an image, a button, and a text area to my screen. Now I will add an interaction. It will be triggered by button is clicked. Button one, the action will be change screen. Here I can select the screen. Right now I only have one screen, but we will fix that later. And here we can choose the transition. I'll select slide for this one. And finally, we see the direction. I'll also leave it at east. And now we'll duplicate the screen three times to have four different screens. As you can see, I now have four screens. This arrow shows the startup screen and we'll keep it on screen one. For each of the screens, I have a different image background and a different text. So now I can go back to my interaction and actually change the screen destination. On screen one, the destination will be screen two and I will keep it the transition on slide. But for the other screen, I'll change the transition. We have four different transitions. So that's perfect with our four screens. Let's look at the different transition. First, the slide. We see that both screen go side by side. Then the cover. The new screen goes on top. Then the wipe. They both disappear and appear at the same time. And finally, the block that is like a pixel per pixel style. Now I will press F2 to show the different area that are invalidated. F9 to make it in step-by-step -step mode. And then I can click on play and F10 to go step-by-step. -step. And here we see each uh, area that is uh, invalidated. So for the slide, the whole screen is invalidated every tick. Then for the cover, it's only the new screen that is appearing that is invalidated. For the wipe, only the junction is invalidated. So this one doesn't use as much power as the other ones. And finally, for the block, we see that only the pixels that are invalidated appears. Another way to switch screen is to directly call the function from the code. Let's look at screen one. We're going to delete the button and also delete the interaction. Instead, we're going to add an action that we will call call screen change. And then we can recreate our interaction. This time the trigger will be call screen change is called and with the rest will be similar. Change screen, screen to slide. We can now click on generate code and look at it in the text editor. Under generated, GUI generated, source screen one, we can use the screen one view base.cpp and here we see the action that we created and we see the function that calls the screen transition. So we can call either the application go to screen two or the call screen change and it will work. So let's demonstrate that by going to GUI source screen one and screen one view.cpp. Here we will do a handle tick event function. Uh, that will wait for 60 ticks before calling the action. We did that previously, so I'm going to skip forward the code and just go to the results. This is the code I came up with. So in the HPP, you see the function and the variable. And in the CPP, you see what it does. So it checks if we got to 60. If we did, then we call the action. Otherwise, we increment the variable. So let's check that in the simulator. As expected, after one second, we change screen. So let's go back to the first screen. 
and it happens again. So it means that we are actually calling the action. It works fine in the simulator, but if we try to flash the board, it will not work. At least we will not see the slide animation because this animation is a bit special. It requires a specific frame buffer that is called the animation storage, and we need to set it up with the code. So let's do this. Here you can see the TouchGFX support page for the animation storage. We see that we have to declare a namespace and then we have to set the animation storage. So let's do this. Everything is in touchgfx hal.cpp. So let's copy paste. This time we have to open targets and then directly touchgfx hal.cpp. Here I can paste the namespace. However, we need to set the correct uh, dimension for the frame buffer. So here we use 60 bits and we use uint 16. So it's perfect. If we use uint 32, we would have to divide by two. But here we can just put 800 by 480 pixels. We also have to set the animation storage. It should be done after this line. And now it will work from the target and from the simulator. This comes with drawback, however, because we are creating a whole new frame buffer only for this single transition. It's quite a lot of space, so it really has to be considered. Now that we have seen the different transition, we'll check at their performances. To do so, I have with me an H7 S7 discovery board that I will use as reference. At the back of the board, we have some pins that are available and some are used to measure the render time. The render time is the time that it takes to calculate the new frame that we want to display. The more area we invalidate or we redraw, the more time it takes. Since we use 60 ticks, it means that a frame should take less than 16 milliseconds to render. Otherwise, we will skip frames. To know which pin to connect, I will open the readme file. Here I can see four pins that we use. One for the vSync, the render time, the frame rate, and the activity of the MCU. I will connect this pin to Logic Analyzer and run each of the transitions. I have connected the board and flashed the program. Now let's start the session and I will click on the different interaction. This is the slide, the cover, the wipe, and the block. Now let's pause the session and look at the results. Where we see the MCU load being active, it's when we actually did the transition. So this is the slide, the cover, the wipe, and the block. We said previously that the slide and the cover should take more power, while these two should take less. So let's compare them. Keep in mind, however, that we use a pretty powerful board. Here we have a render time of five seconds, 4.3, something like that. For the cover, we are, it's increasing because as we start, we invalidate less area, and at the end, we invalidate a bigger area. So the worst is the whole screen, five seconds, but at the beginning, it's way less. Then this one is the one that invalidates only uh, the junction between the two screens, so it's very little. And finally, we have the block that also invalidates a tiny amount of the screen. So if you want the best performances, the wipe and the block transition are the best. But if you don't care about the performance or if you have a powerful board, you can do the slide or the cover. TouchGFX provides a range of timeless screen transitions that are created by TouchGFX Generator. You can use them in the interaction or directly in code, but be aware of their computing power if you use an entry-level chip with a big screen. Also, remember to add an animation frame buffer if you want to use the slide animation. If you want to keep learning, you can check our documentation, our API, and our tutorials on our website. Please find the link in the description. You can check our other videos on this playlist where we talk about various subjects. 
Finally, if you have a specific question about your project, you can ask it on the ST forum. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next one.